<sighs> well, it can only happen to me. I was washing the rust remover Renix out of the tank and the spray nozzle came off the end of the hose and guess where it is? In there somewhere. Episode of TJM, the uh, Jagman. A uh, bit of a mixed bag. This episode, oh... I uh, called into my local Repco shop to see if we can get some sparkulators for our Satin Bays Series 3. And I needed 12 of them, and they had two of them, so that didn't work. But I thought I'd just uh, take it out, take one out this afternoon when I got here to see what sort of um, heat range it had in there. And the plugs themselves look pretty good and clean, really. I'm quite surprised uh, they haven't had much use whatsoever. But uh, I dropped it. So I've broken a plug. And so at least I know I can dash into Repco tomorrow and get another one. So I've walked away from that for the moment. <clears throat> As you know from my last episode, I was doing a little bit of um, more electrolysis stuff on the uh, Miss Daisy. I want to, those tanks are just as bad as uh, the Satin Bay's old girl is, was. So uh, I did a bit of electrolysis with the solution. I was only able to fill it up one third of the tank because um, the sender unit, uh, I can't get this into the top of the tank. So I had to uh, put the electrode into the sender unit down below and it cleaned pretty good. That lower third of the tank is looking pretty schmick, but uh, the upper part of the tank still pretty bad. So I was thinking, how am I gonna fill that tank up with water and get an electrode in there? So, an old mate, uh, another subscriber, so recommended that maybe I use an old fuel sender unit. I seem to have a few of them. And make an electrode out of that. So I thought that's a good idea. I'll just scratch my head and I'm thinking this bar's too heavy for it. Get a thinner bar. This is an old garage hook I found in the garage. Straighten it out, put some insulation on it, maybe some rubber hose. Attach it to this existing um, I'll send a unit, hook up the positive to it, negative hook to the tank, and let it sizzle for at least a couple of days because I won't be able to take it out without having to drain all that uh, solution again. So we'll work on that as well. That'll be fun. And another real little drama. When we were firing this old girl up last week, remember I had, when we first started it, I was only using the right tank and I had fuel in that but when you started up because that solenoid um, return valve was US it'd go back into the left tank and so this time we've been putting fuel in the left tank because it's nice and clean I came back one evening and I found fuel not only in the tank but on the ground and I thought oh I've got a leak we can't have a leak so I thought, well, we can't have a leak. I think that thing's been full of our sodium calcite solution for days without a drop of um, fluid coming out of it. So I'm thinking that um, the only way that fuel could be leaking either when I put the solenoid valve back in and didn't tighten up the clamps tight enough, but I've checked that they're dry. It's dry in the boot. <clears throat> it has to be coming from the, the evaporation tubes somewhere. I think they might be blocked. Um, and, and it's slitting out at the top there. I've got to try and find the, the little valves. Apparently the one to the front of the carbon canister plays up a bit. So we'll get stuck into that as well. So let's get organised. We'll do the, uh, we'll get this sorted. Well, there it is. Pretty simple, really, and a, but hopefully should be effective. Positive wire there, and it's attached to my electrode, but it's insulated with my little rubber tubing, a couple of cable ties, and I left that big bend in there. So we'll whack that in and throw some solution in. Well, I had to do a little bit more mod, just a touch. I had to bend that in to fit into the hole. 
And I just took all the protective coating off that because I guess it would have had some sort of gal coating on it that might have just slowed the uh, whole electrolysis system down. So she's sparkling now. We'll throw it in. Put my solution in. Fill the tank full of H2O. Electrodes in and hooked up and ready to go. Okay, battery's hooked up with the charger, so we'll come back in a couple of days and see how we did. Well, we've gone back to this old girl to see why it was leaking last time we were here. Well, I gave this tank another go over with some Renex rust remover and sprayed it in there with my garden sprayer. And I came back and there's drips underneath it and that's a bad sign so i got the torch right up against near where the uh, drain plug is got it in the dark and had a look down the hole there and i can just see a pinhole of light all that work i guess it was worth trying though i mean this one was just probably that little bit too far gone well this tank is stuffed it's got a pinhole leak at the bottom of it. You can just see near the filter there, towards the uh, towards me, there's a um, a pinhole of rust that's gone too far. So even though we've cleaned it, it's, the tank's shot. We'll have to remove it. However, lucky we've got another tank. Hopefully, it's it's not leaking. Oh well. This is the image I took prior to putting the Renex uh, rust remover in. You can see the electrolysis has done a pretty good job. This is the image I took after the Renex had been in the tank for around about 24 hours. You can see it's turned the ruts black and it's filled all the little holes that the electrolysis wasn't able to get into. So it's done a bit of a job. And this is what it looked like after I washed the tank out with water. Well, that electrode's been baking in there now for about 48 hours, so we'll drain the water out of it and we'll pull it out and see what it looks like. Well, it certainly came out with a vengeance. It's a bit more in there. Well, the moment of truth, let's see how he did. Uh, uh, uh. Heavy. A lot heavier than. Uh, oh, she's pretty good. How's that? There's a lot of stuff in that tank. We'll wash it out with some water and then poke the camera and see what it looks like. But that's not a bad effort. If we can get all that crap out of that tank without having to replace them, it's pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that just for first attempt. I know you, a lot of your partners are going to say, what are you doing? Why don't you just replace the tanks? The whole idea of this channel is to, you know, DIY, get stuff back on the road again and, and save these beautiful old girls without having to spend a lot of money on it. Sure, if you're going to do a concourse one or it's your only car that you're playing with, sure, put new tanks in it. But if you can't afford it and you think these tanks might be recoverable, recoverable, well, it's not a bad idea, but I'm going to wash those tanks out now and just poke that camera in there and see how we did. Looking pretty good. Okay, update. Everything's back together. I pulled apart the fuel sender unit and gave that a good clean and tested it on the bench with my multimeter and it's working. We've put that in with new gaskets, new gaskets at the bottom. Five litres of fuel went in it. Uh, wheels back on. I've had the pump running and the fuel's clean. It's looking pretty good. I have nice clean fuel up to the front filter. And she pretty much started straight away.
That battery's not coming up again. Have to look at that. But the ignition light's not on, so I'm pretty sure it's charging. Still needs a bit of tweaking. Uh, I've got to retune those carbies again. But at least I can move it now and get it out of the garage, sort of. Okay, so we're on to the other tank. And look what I washed out of the tank. That'll clean up all right. Put that straight in my nut and bolt box. Ah, well, it can only happen to me. I was washing the rust remover Renix out of the tank. And the spray nozzle came off the end of the hose. And guess where it is? In there somewhere. I poked the camera down there, but I can't even see it. It's come right back to this part of the back of the tank. Got to get it out somehow. Well, I've just attached a bit of hose to the vacuum cleaner and see if we might be able to suck it out. Success. Well, hi guys, we're back in Sydney. The bloke's got to come back and do some real work. Anyway, uh, last two days, we got a bit done. We didn't get everything done that we wanted to get done. The main thing is I've got Miss Daisy running with one clean fuel tank. So it means I can move that car now without too many problems. I would really like to have attacked Saturn Bay's V12. Got that running a bit smoother, but we got held up with that pinhole in the petrol tank, fuel tank on the right tank. So we've got to decide what we do with that. We can pour some epoxy resin in it and block it up. There is ways and means to patch that tank up, but eventually it really has to be changed. So we'll look at that next week. I'm glad I got that nozzle out of the tank, even though the tank stuff, that doesn't really matter, but I did like that nozzle, it was easy. Get that fixed. So next week we'll uh, see if we can get that Series 3 running smoothly. We'll do a bit more work on the left-hand fuel tank of the Miss Daisy. And I'd love to be able to take these things for a test ride. I'm busting to get these things out on the road. And I thought it might have been the Saturn Base V12 going first, but it looks like we might be able to get Miss Daisy out there and give it a run, bring you guys along with us and just see how well it goes. So thanks for watching, guys. If you really like the video, give it the thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed, just press that handsome bloke down there somewhere. He'll, uh, he'll look after you. See you next week.